Okay, class. Um, there's some issue with the textbooks that I just need to address really quick. And then I just want to kind of reiterate some ideas or some points about um, the uh, Sunday papers, especially in, in this situation that some of you are, are finding yourself in. Um, so I finally today got a hold of the bookstore, and I have a good relationship um, uh, with the, the powers that be behind the bookstore, okay? And um, <clears throat> I, I was a little bit confused what's going on because I... I ordered everything on time and um, I was it was brought to my attention something that's happening within the university system the, the college system that uh, is new to me and um, somebody working within the book uh, I, I, was, I was informed about what our situation is It seems that all of the book textbook companies now, and by the way, I didn't get the memo on this, okay, are trying to push, no, no, they are pushing for us professors to get their programs like Rebel, and then, um, if anybody knows what that is, they used to have like My History Lab, um, there were certain things I liked about that, certain things I didn't, I'm not a fan of Rebel. And basically what they're trying to do is make everything go digital. So you're paying money for only having online access. And what it means is that they are actually having less and less access to actual textbooks. And then when they're being found, they're being charged, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're costing more than before. This is a new dilemma I was not aware of. So the bookstore has has been having a struggle getting more textbooks. Um, there are more. We finally resolved by, by Monday there will be um, more coming in. But this took a lot of just, this was not, it's not supposed to be this complicated. Um, and uh, again, I, I was unaware of this problem. Um, so for example, I was just told, I think I can give this information out, that it used to be that students would return textbooks, right? And um, the MJC bookstore would buy like almost $100,000 worth of books back and then be able to sell used books to the next set of classes. Now, I think this year, they bought only like $7,000 worth of books. In other words, people aren't having books to return um, in, for used books. So, the getting getting used books is becoming less possible and getting new books is getting less possible and I guess we're supposed to all get on board with this um, but then what we're also having is this lack of communication between the powers that be beyond just the bookstore those of us who are students and professors and I should be probably careful about what I'm gonna say on this because I don't know really what to make of it or I don't want to fault I, I don't know what I should say about where the responsibility really lies or, or who should be responsible for this. But this is our problem that we've had. So um, if you can find online, cool. Um, we should be having more textbooks in on Monday. That's my understanding. Um, if you're a veteran with a voucher, uh, my I was given the attention that maybe it that it ends on the 19th. If there are any veterans in my class that are relying on vouchers and you can only go directly to the bookstore, such as one of my students um, made me aware of uh, that that was their situation, um, the bookstore will work with you. Um, we can make arrangements that you get, uh, um, make a payment for the books that's not in yet. I mean, you know, using the voucher and then getting your book in time without you having to pay for it. Okay. So I just want to make that aware to all of the the veterans that are using that kind of a system right now. Um, I actually have to go in late to my, uh, right now I'm going to my other job for a few hours and then tomorrow I work, for the rest of the week until Saturday I work many hours at my other job. But I will try to respond. If you if you call me and I don't get to answer it, leave me a text so I can get back a hold of you later, okay? So I hope that kind of clears things up. Now. I've mentioned that you can survive without the textbook um, 
but it'll be easier with it. This week we have an assignment for the discussions that requires you to have the textbook. If you don't have the textbook, then you don't know, you didn't get to read what uh, um, the Assyrian and the ancient Israelite chronicles, right? Um, so I'm not going to punish anybody n um, for not being able to do assignment that was our, on our end. Um, but either way, like we, we are all going to need to resolve having the textbooks. For now, it looks like most of you do have some, have them, but a lot don't. Um, for now, um, if, if you don't have a textbook yet and you can't do your assignment on Thursday, um, then I want you to write to me on Canvas. But I, 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 I really am going, if I get too many people writing this to me, I'm going to have to, um, just don't take advantage of this, please. I'm, I'm trying to work with everybody. If you just haven't took the time to try to get a textbook, please don't play that uh, uh, route, okay? And the bottom line is on the discussion, you get five points for addressing the question I have. You can't do that if, without the textbook, but you can comment on other students. Um, you can be a participant in the discussions. Um, so in any case, I, I don't know. Hopefully this just gets settled soon because I don't like this getting too complicated. Last thing. Sunday papers, I just want to say this, and the notes, just to remind everybody. So for notes, everything that I post that's under a lecture, or, you know, the, the down. The, if you have to watch a video, whether it's a documentary, my lecture, or another lecturer, another person speaking, you need to write notes on it. The whole point of my, uh, of, of you guys having to take notes, is that uh, it's proof to me that you actually watched everything. And that you're learning something, okay? So let's just really clarify that right now. I don't want to have to write that anymore. I'm not mad about that or, or, or upset or anything, but I just, um, instead of me having to write this all the time, I just want us to be clear. Everything that I post for each week's module, it needs to be written on, except for my announcements, okay? To clarify. All right, so um, then in terms of what I'm looking for, some of you write really well, but you write a lot of fluff, even though you write well. Meaning, you're not really proving to me that you read everything like thoroughly. Like, but so I like it when I see an articulate uh, paper that has a general idea. I'm gonna start grading harder and harder in the next two weeks. And all, all and here's what I mean. And I kind of indicated this to some of you, and hopefully it came off as polite. I need names, dates, and places. I need you to have some examples in there. And, and you don't have to write a lot. You know, so this last paper, we should see the name Hammurabi pop up on the Mesopotamian side, right? And Sargon, we should, you know, know about the law code of Hammurabi. Maybe talk about the Epic of Gilgamesh and some of the Mesopotamian texts like the flood uh, myth stories. And um, some of the conceptions of like the god like kings, like in the Epic of Gilgamesh, that's something there. And then, you know, going over into um, Egypt, we, we talked about the Egyptian Book of the Dead. We talked about Akhenaten and his religious reforms and his political reforms and the controversy that was over that. We watched a whole documentary on this. And so um, I still had a lot of papers that didn't mention Akhenaten at all. Um, I, I didn't grade too hard this time, but I'm just saying, you know, if we if we watch a documentary on a character and, and it fits into our subject matter, and it was also brought up in the lectures, probably that's an important thing that you should be able to, like, incorporate into your paper. And you didn't need the textbook for that, okay? So, these are the kind of things I'm looking for. I hope this is clear. Again, it's, you know, um, I, I think that many of you who are getting the rhythm are seeing you're getting full points and you're doing well. So, I hope that what's coming off to you from me is that I'm trying to work for you guys, I'm trying to figure out our textbook problems, I'm trying to figure out issues with, you know, making clear to you guys what I'm looking for so it's easier for you to get your work done, and I'm hoping to help you guys learn things, right? And I think many of you are doing great, as a matter of fact, many of you are doing great, and many of you are handling uh, 
some of this controversial material very well in terms of being able to articulate it, understanding that what you're learning is the way that the world is understood by certain groups of people, thinkers, and and uh, groups, and um, you, you're not, you know, I don't even know necessarily what all of you personally believe. Uh, I, I think probably a lot of you don't know exactly what I personally believe, but I'm telling you, I'm teaching you what the field of history has as, as from a consensus point of view, right? What the majority consensus points of view are. And once in a while, I give you something on the side, like when I talked about Freud's interpretation of Moses and Akhenaten, um, I just want to make clear, he that's that's theory is mainly discredited by most scholars, um, but it's an interesting legacy of Freud for one. It's the last work he had. He's very he's very he's very well known. He's not really well known for that work. Excuse me. And what he addresses in there are still things that kind of trickle down into popular culture, uh, uh, and even somewhat in some scholarly debates in terms of the relationship or the question about the influence of Akhenaten on ancient Israel, um, such as we even saw the quote from C.S. Lewis, a Christian the, uh, um, um, writer who's very popular and, and also himself said, you know, I do see some similarities here between this hymn of Akhenaten, of, of Aten and uh, the Psalms and so forth. So anyhow, I'm going to end it here. I hope that this is a helpful uh, uh, video. And uh, we will all be in touch um, as needed. Um, and may everything in life go a little smoother for us all. <laughs> all right.